So if I want to clamp a piece like this, uh, I'll just pop out one of the dogs, line up against it. I'll get the jaws. And I'll just close the jaws up, tighten it up. Now I can clean this piece or do whatever. And if I want to plane the thin edge, I just need to unlock this, put it up on its edge like this, and it back down. Hello everyone, um, if you have a vise like this one here that's sitting around somewhere and you're willing to take it apart, then I can show you how to use the screw and the nut here to make a really nice uh, inset vise or tail vise or a wagon wheel vise, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to take this screw and then just lay it uh, on here and I'm going to do it all my layout lines. And this line here is the one where everything should line up against. And I'm gonna remove this section here. This section here is about four by seven by two and a quarter inches thick. And this is gonna be the part that's gonna be sliding in and out. And I've got the uh, screw holding side of the nut, I guess. And so my estimation is this should be able to come out about three and a half inches. I've also marked areas where I want the dog holes to be on the moving part of the tail vise and also marked places where I think the dog hole should be along the line uh, of the vise, of the tail vise. And I've also marked areas, for example here, where there is a brace underneath the, the uh, workbench. So let's get started and get this part prepped first. I don't have any machines that could handle a slab of this size, so I'll just do the cut by hand. Now if you want to learn how to saw through a big slab like this by hand, go ahead and follow the link in the description. I'm making a V-shaped groove here so that it can function as a guide for the drill bit. I then drilled a series of holes to make the sawing step easier. I then flip the slab over and remove the excess material so that I can install a guide plate later. I then did a couple of plunge cuts with the oscillating saw from both sides and the two pieces came apart with uh, very little effort. I then used hand tools to square up two perpendicular faces. This block is extremely figured, so I have to use a circular motion to plane the faces. And then I used a table saw and a miter saw to do the rest of the squaring up. Once the block was squared up, I then used the table saw to locate the position of the dado where the screw is going to be housed. So with the moving block pretty much finished and ready to be fitted, I turn my attention over to the bench top side. I smoothed out all the faces and removed any of the marks left by the drill bit. I lined the inside faces with thin pieces of hickory. Hickory is a great material here because it is strong, it is very hard, it is very resistant to wear, and it's very resilient. And I also love the color contrast it creates with um, the walnut background.
Once the moving block is gliding smoothly, I then used it to locate the position of the screw housing on the bench top itself. I have uh, finished clearing out this slot here and it's lined up pretty well with the, uh, the moving block. I'm going to set that in and then I'm going to position, figure out where the screw nuts should go. So just kind of squeeze it all together loosely. And I've got these little shims to help me position these so that it's relatively centered. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark the position of this nut on the piece of wood here. Okay. And then I'm going to cut out this area here and, um, so that this screw nut can be held in, it can be moved in about, it looks like 3 eighths of an inch. The original screw that came with the uh, vise is basically worthless because the hex key here is not quite imperial and not quite metric. So it doesn't fit either well. And also there is some cross threading in here so once you get it in there it's very difficult to thread. Uh, so I went ahead and enlarged this hole with a Dremel tool so that I could put in a quarter inch uh, leg screw. I wanted to tell you about um, some of the other pieces I've made. For example, this is a jaw covering that goes on the inside here, and it's just going to be screwed in. And on this face of the jaw, that's going to be meeting this face, I put another piece of hickory to add on to it. And this piece can be glued in, and if I need to, I can replace this. And on the other end, where the screw goes in, is this piece. And these will be uh, held together with screws. And the screw fits in like this. So now we're talking about the guide rails. The guide rails, this jaw can't move this way or this way. But, uh, oh, and also it can't move downwards because there will be a rail underneath it, so it can't push down. What it can do is lift up as I screw this in. So to prevent that, uh, you'll recall the recess I made on the underside here uh, in the beginning of the project. I actually made that for this piece of, uh, I guess you call it be a guide board, right? And it just goes in like so. So I'm going to glue this piece in and these screws are just going to help me align them while it's being glued. Once this is in, it'll slide up against it and it keeps it from coming upwards when this jaw is being tightened. So if you have seen my past videos, you may recall that I've made pop-up dogs before 
and I made them using round dowel rods. Part of that was because I wanted to try something new and part of that is because it's a lot easier to drill a circular hole than it is to chisel out a square hole. And I think circular holes would have worked just as good here. But after debating, I decided to go with um, square dog holes um, because one, I haven't done square dog holes before, but uh, but just as important that the square dog holes matches the squarishness of the moving block really well. So again, it would be easier to just drill a nice round hole here and use um, round dogs but I decided to carry the design language of the square dogs over onto the moving block as well. And also by um, using square dogs throughout this vise, I'm able to limit the degree of freedom these dogs have. All right, to get the dogs to pop up and down, I'm using these uh, magnetic latches spring-loaded and there are different varieties but they all work exactly the same way so push once it pops up push again stays down and the dogs themselves I've made from um, uh, oak now I've cut a little wedge here um, so that when I'm clamping something uh, I want the force to be directed either parallel to the table or downwards towards the table So on the moving block side of this tail vise, I've made uh, these little dogs, and these little dogs fit into the mortises that I had made on the block. And if I want to hold something thin or thick, holding thinner stuff is a little more difficult. I just place it in between the two dogs and tighten it down, and this is pretty secure. And for whatever reason. If I want to hold it like this, I'll just, um, I can actually hold it with just one of these dogs here. Okay, so this works pretty well when it's being held at an angle. And if for some reason this doesn't work, I can always place a bridge piece like this in between. So when the tail vise is not being used, um, I don't really want these things here sticking out on top of the bench. So I'll just take these out, then I'm left with these holes. Um, and I don't want stuff falling into them all the time. So I made these little cover pieces, and they just, they're very light, just cover the top. You know, I'll just uncover whichever hole I need to use. And when I'm done, take the dog out, put these little cover back on, and it keeps dust out and keeps the bench top nice and neat. So underneath here, you can see that I've got these support pieces here and this little wedge piece here. And that keeps the moving block from getting pushed downwards. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the project. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.